The next topic we're going to talk about with moments of inertia is called the parallel axis theorem. Sometimes we have an object that we're going to spin around a different location than its center of gravity, and so in that case, the, all, all the mass of that object is a different distance away from its axis of rotation than, than we had previously assumed when we calculated the moment of inertia for those standard shapes. So there's a formula that allows us to make uh, an adaptation. That formula is called the parallel axis theorem, and it says that the moment of inertia when you spin an object around some new axis of rotation is the same as its original moment of inertia spun around its center of mass plus the object's mass times d squared, where d is going to be the distance away from the center of mass where your new axis of rotation is going to be. So let's take some examples. Let's imagine shifting a rod. Normally we know the moment of inertia for spinning a rod around its center, that's 1 12th ml squared. But let's suppose instead we're going to shift so the rod is spun around from one end, like a baseball bat or something. So that means we're shifting it by L over 2. That means that the new moment of inertia but calculated by the parallel axis theorem is going to be the original one, 1 12th ml squared, plus we have to take m d squared, where d is the distance that we're going to do the shift. In this case, the shift was L over 2, so we're putting in L over 2 in that formula, and we have 1 12th ml squared plus m times L over 2 quantity squared. That turns out to be 1 third ml squared. So that's an example of how to use the parallel axis theorem when we just shift a distance over. Let's take another example. We'll take dumbbells and we'll calculate the moment of inertia for this co complex shape. Now we already know how to calculate the moment of inertia for a ball or a sphere and we know how to calculate the moment of inertia for a rod but we have to put all those objects together uh, in the following way. So we'll assume that each ball has ma ca mass capital M and a radius capital R and we're going to assume that L is twice as big as R. So the moment of inertia of a sphere is normally 2 fifths mr squared, but we're going to be moving the center of gravity of that sphere over by a distance. And that distance is going to be R plus L over 2. Remember the center of gravity is down in the center of that sphere, so it's not just L over 2 away, it's R plus L over 2 away. This works out to be 2 fifths mr squared plus 4 mr squared, where I remembered that L was twice as big as R. Or in other words, 22 fifths mr squared. So that's the moment of inertia around of one of those spheres spinning around this dotted line, which represents the axis of rotation. Of course, the, the total moment of inertia for the dumbbell is two of these plus the moment of inertia of the rod itself. So that's 1 12th ml squared for the rod plus 44 fifths mr squared. If I remember what L is, uh, that turns out to be 1 third little m r squared, where m is, little m is the mass of the rod, and plus 44 fifths capital M r squared, where capital M is the mass of the, dumb, of the ball. So that's how another example of using the parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia of a rather complex shape out of some simple ingredients that we already knew.